Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. Today I've got another best of what's for dinner. We're gonna share our top five meals from the last three months. Yay! Okay, so if you are new here, I am trying to do these four times a year, so once a quarter. We make a lot of brand new meals, new to us, new to y'all, every single week on What's For Dinner. And while we love all of them or we wouldn't share them, there are some standout favorites of ours that we want to have over and over again. So it's kind of nice to update y'all at the end of a quarter and say, hey, here's our favorites from this last quarter, just in case you didn't make it, maybe you forgot about it. Now this is kind of like your, your little signal to, to go try this recipe because it is tried and true from us. So this is our top five. We're going to start the countdown. So we're going to start with number five and I'm going to let this guy introduce it. Coming in at number five is the chicken sausage and veggie skillet. We made this one obviously not too long ago, but we also made it while we were on vacation in Hilton Head because we loved it that much. It has so many fresh veggies and at this time of year, it's so easy to get access to all of those. So I hope you enjoy it some chicken sausage and vegetables all together in one skillet. We're gonna season it really well. It's gonna be a great summer dish. And then I'm gonna serve it with a side of rice pilaf. Very simple dinner. Let's get started. I recently bought a three pack of chicken sausages from Sam's. This is the mozzarella and artichoke, maybe sun-dried tomato. I'm not sure. That's what type this is. It's not a spicy blend. And here are all the vegetables that I've got. I've got two red potatoes, a red bell pepper, an orange bell pepper, some red onion, some spices, some garlic, zucchini, and we're just gonna do a very simple boxed rice pilaf. I'm getting started on the rice pilaf first because it has to be, it has to simmer on the stove for like 25 minutes, so let's get the water going. Okay, the first thing we need to do is cook these potatoes or put these in the skillet and cook them for like 10 to 15 minutes. So while they're cooking, I will chop up the rest of the veggies. Let's take these over there. Okay, I've got our large skillet here. I'm heating it to medium high. I'm gonna put in a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm also going to put in one tablespoon of butter. We're gonna let that heat up and then we will add our potatoes and some seasonings in. So I'm having a problem remembering to hit record on the new camera that I got, but I just chopped up our chicken sausage while I was waiting on our olive oil and our butter to come to temperature. Okay, this is nice and hot, so let's add in our potatoes. And we're gonna season them with some garlic powder, some salt, and some pepper. We're just gonna cook these until they are pretty tender. So maybe for like 10 to 15 minutes. We'll come over here and stir them every so often. And while these are cooking, I'm gonna finish chopping up everything else. Okay, these have been cooking for almost 10 minutes. They're getting pretty tender. I'm gonna give them just a couple more minutes. I've been turning them every, ever so often. In just a minute, what I'm gonna do is take a slotted spoon and just remove all of these out and put them over here in this bowl. And then we will put our chicken sausage in and just brown that up. Okay, so I've got these in there in a single layer. I'm just going to let them brown up for two to three minutes and then we will add in our other veggies and get those really tender as well. Here's the pack of chicken sausage that we got, and we are using this one tonight, the mozzarella and roasted garlic with artichoke chicken sausage. They also have the honey habanero and Monterey Jack cheese and the gouda and pear with savory spices. So this is our first one out of this pack. We really enjoy chicken sausage, just having it on hand because it makes for really quick and easy dinners. It's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and add in all of our good veggies. I've got both of our bell peppers, our zucchini, and our red onion. I'm gonna wait for the garlic. I'll put it in towards the very end. You just don't want it to burn. 
that will cook this for probably five to seven minutes just until all of our veggies are tender. I am gonna turn the heat back up just a little bit. I have turned it down to about medium. So let's crank that back up. And we will do some more seasoning at the end. Now that our veggies are pretty tender, I'm gonna add in our garlic. I've got about two and a half cloves because one of them was really small. Let's saute this for like 30 seconds to a minute. I've got some Italian seasoning and some everything seasoning. It's this right here from Flavor God. It just says on the recipe to use salt and pepper, but I thought this would be great. Let's go ahead and season this. And let's add our potatoes back in. Just gonna let this kind of sit here, warm through. And in about two or three minutes, we'll be ready to eat. Well, this smells amazing. Looks delicious. Look at all the spices on there. Mm -hmm. All those herbs. Mm, man, oh man. Man, yeah. Man, those spices and herbs are perfect together. The potatoes are amazing. Yeah. They are delicious. Good, I'm glad. All of the spices that you have in there, I mean, you, can, you definitely get the garlic. Yeah. Get that garlic in there with that. Yeah. Um, I, I also put some garlic powder in there before you came in, so. Mm. Not, not much spice, just a touch of spice. Yeah. Not much, just enough. Um, very rich in flavor. There's no blandness at all with this. This is uh, very flavorful. A lot of the aromatic herbs that you have in there are coming through. It's really good. Well, I'm glad you like it, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. I'm with the guys on this one. This one is delicious. It's got so much flavor packed in there, but yet it's still light in a way. It's not too heavy. This is a really great summer meal. Okay, our next one, I'm gonna let him introduce it in just a second, but I wanted to let you know, it is a subby supper. There's two subby suppers in our top five, which j just goes to show, we really appreciate y'all sending in recipes because we find the best of the best through y'all. So thank you so much. Little plug here, if you've never sent in a subby supper, you can do that by emailing me at mandyinthemaking2018 at gmail.com, and you just put in the subject line, subby supper. Now, without further ado, He's gonna introduce number four. Coming in at number four, Marvette's French onion chicken and green beans. Marvette said to use two pounds of either chicken breasts or chicken thighs. We're gonna go with like 2.25 pounds. That's just what this one was. I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper these. I do have my oven preheating to 400 as well. So we've got this cast iron skillet heated to about medium, medium high. I've got a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil in there and we're just gonna brown our chicken thighs on one side for just a few minutes and then we'll flip them. We're just gonna salt and pepper them on the other side before we flip them. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Steven's gonna go ahead and flip them. And once we get them flipped, we're gonna add in our diced onion. Okay, 
Okay, now we're just gonna let the second side brown, and once it is browned, we will move on to our next step. Okay, now we're gonna add in a can of French onion soup. And we're gonna add in this large family size can or 28 ounce can of French style green beans. You can use whatever style you want. But we did drain it first. <laughs> okay, now we're just gonna put it in the 400 degree oven for 20 minutes until our chicken is done. And then we will add one more thing on top when we're done. Okay, our subby supper is in the oven. I've got mashed potatoes going in the Instant Pot. And I wanted to really quickly jump on here and tell you how to submit a subby supper if you've never done so. I, I used to always say that, but now I keep forgetting to say it. You just email me. Email me at mandyinthemaking2018 at gmail.com. And in the subject, make sure you put subby supper. I get a lot of submissions, so if you don't hear back from me, don't be disheartened. I might still choose yours. It just takes me a while to get through them all. Okay, it's been in there for 20 minutes. Let's kind of move these around a little bit. And now we're going to add a package of French fried onions right on top. It's gonna go back in for 10 more minutes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, yeah. The thighs, mmm, just tender. That's what we're looking for. You don't right need there. enough. Nope. I don't even need this now. I don't even know why I have it. <laughs> Trying to be all proper. <laughs> Baby, you ain't been a proper a day in your life. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that deserved a wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody is happy. I'm just real happy about that. <laughs> I'm happy because the thighs are cooked right. They got great flavor. I mean, you've got all the French onion goodness going on, plus the onions in there. Yeah. With the green beans, but that sauce, with the thighs, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Well, as much as I'm enjoying watching you eat, mm. it's time for me to eat. Marvet, I'm speechless. Mm. Cole, what did you say? I, I just don't know where to start about how good this is. Right. This is, this is just amazing. It is so incredibly good. This mm. may end up in our next favorites. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, wow. Steven wasn't lying when he said, wow. Well, you gotta be making this tomorrow, though. I gotta <laughs> Y'all need to make this. This is amazing. Thank you so much for this recipe creation and for submitting it, Marvette. Oh, my word. Okay, that's enough talking. I gotta dig, dig back in. We highly suggest that you try Marvette's French onion chicken. It's so easy and so incredibly tasty. Now for number three. Number three, creamy pesto chicken. To get 
started on our chicken, I've got a tablespoon of Italian seasoning and about a quarter teaspoon each of salt and pepper. I'm gonna mix this together and we're just gonna season our chicken. a large cast iron skillet you can either just use a regular pan or you're going to just have to transfer everything over to an oven safe dish so that's why I'm choosing to use this I'm heating it up to about medium let me actually turn it to about medium high and we're gonna add some butter in here and melt it we're just going to sear our chicken on either side for just a couple of minutes So we had a little boo-boo. I added a half a cup of heavy cream along with a little bit of chicken broth, some pesto, and some grated Parmesan cheese in here. I'll have all the measurements linked below. Sorry about that. With this new camera, we keep forgetting to hit record. And so I'm just mixing all of this together to get the cheese to melt down. Then we're gonna add the chicken back in and it'll go in the oven. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this from the heat. Let's add our chicken back in. And this is optional, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna to top it with some mozzarella cheese, a good healthy dose of mozzarella cheese. That right there looks fit to eat. Mm-hmm. This is going in for 20 minutes at 350. Now in this large skillet, I'm gonna add some olive oil. I'm gonna add in a couple of pats of butter. Let's add in our potatoes. stir these around and coat them with our olive oil and butter. If you were here either last week or the week before, I can't remember what's for dinner, it, which what's for dinner it was in, but I did potatoes like this very similarly and we loved them so much that we're just gonna do them by themselves as a side tonight. Should take about 15 minutes. I'm gonna come over here and stir it pretty often. You need to put a lid on it or? Nope. Oh, okay. So I've been stirring these every couple of minutes. You just don't want it to get burnt on one side. You do want this good char color over there, but you don't want them to burn. So try and get them kind of coated on each side with a little bit of that dark brown. Just keep coming in here and stirring them. And after about 15 minutes, these are going to be perfect.
Well, I'm excited to try this pesto chicken with all of the pesto sauce covered in mozzarella cheese. That is really good. That basil pesto sauce with the cheese, that is amazing. I love the Parmesan cheese with the, with the basil. That's exceptional. This is really, really, really good. Yeah. It's not something we have very often, so. No, I mean, I don't know. the last time we've had it. I don't think I've ever made pesto, sweetheart, or oh, pesto chicken. This is tremendous. This needs to be a regular thing. Okay. <laughs> Someone else likes mm -hmm. it. Mm hmm. Mm. All right, try our potatoes, see how they turned out. I got them potatoes. I can't really describe them of how good they are. <laughs> They're amazing. Mm. They're so good. Mm. Oh, yeah. Such an easy side. This is one of them meat on your bones meal. <laughs> Love it. All right, Lou, what you think? As soon as I put the camera down, look what she did. Lou. You think you need something? <laughs> this is phenomenal. It is so good. I can't believe how easy this dinner was. It took tops, what, maybe 45 minutes from start to finish. It was so easy and it's so good. Y'all have got to try this one. So we just recently had pesto or I cooked with pesto for the first time and it was that recipe and it was so incredibly good. We have a lot of basil growing here at the house. I planted very small basil plants several months ago and now they're very tall <laughs> basil plants. So I think I'm gonna give um, making my own pesto a try. So mm -hmm. stay tuned, that'll be coming up soon. Now we're getting down to the top two. Right. Pause this. If you've been watching this whole quarter, take your guess below what you think number one or number two might be. Because it's very obvious in the taste test with him, which ones are his absolute favorites over this last quarter. So those are the two that we chose. But just if you have a guess, leave it below. Okay. Coming in at the number two spot, Korean barbecue tacos. I'm going to take y'all back in time to last night when we were marinating the chuck roast. I'm going to show you that and then you'll jump back in and we will cook it in the instant pot today. Welcome back to the third meal that I'm making today. You'll see this, the rest of this tomorrow, but we are marinating this overnight. I'm really excited about it. So we showed you that we had the chuck roast. We went ahead and put it in this large gallon size bag, and I'm just gonna start adding all of my ingredients for the marinade directly in here. I've got a cup of soy sauce. I'm using the low sodium soy sauce. I've got a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic a tablespoon of ginger paste. I've got two tablespoons of toasted sesame seed oil. Oh, I said oil. Are you proud of me? <laughs> <laughs> trying to be all fancy. <laughs> two tablespoons of brown sugar. The recipe called for a tablespoon of chili flakes. I'm using a half a tablespoon because I didn't want to overdo it for mine and Cole's sake. Stephen would have gone for the whole tablespoon, I'm sure. Okay, the very last ingredient that we need to do is this pear. It says unpeeled, but we're gonna grate this pear in our little cheese grater over here. I just think it'll work really well. So we've got this pear and we're just gonna grate it. I've never tried grating a pear before. Look at that. Okay, I'm just coming in here and just mashing this up really well, which is very easy to do. Pears are so soft. Okay, so let's add our grated pear into the marinade. That's it. Let's 
close it up and kind of mash it all together. And we'll just stick this in the fridge overnight. I think she said you want to marinate for at least four hours, but you could also do overnight. So that just sounded like a great idea to me. That's it folks, it's going in the fridge overnight. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay y'all, so it has been marinating all night long and it smells so good. Here, take a whiff. Mm, 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 mm. So what we're gonna do is take the entire contents of all of this and just dump it directly into our Instant Pot and we're gonna pressure cook it on high for 40 minutes. Okay, we've only got about 15 more minutes until this is done. So we're gonna make kind of our Asian slaw to go on top of our tacos. So let me show you our ingredients. She said you'll need a, an Asian salad mix. She said she prefers Taylor Farms, I think is the brand, but my grocery store did not have it. Some sriracha and some mayonnaise. And y'all know I'm gonna use Duke's. Okay, so let's dump our salad mix in here. We're only going to use about half of this dressing that comes in there. Now we need about a tablespoon of sriracha sauce. And about a half a cup of mayo. Okay, let's just mix this up. Okay, it's done. You can either allow it to naturally release or you can do a quick release, which is what we're gonna do because we hungry. <laughs> I wish y'all could smell this house. It smells so good. Okay, I was going to attempt and shred this in the Instant Pot, but Although it's very tender, it's hard to do in the Instant Pot because, you know, this twirls around the entire time. So we just pulled it out and we will put it back in there to soak up the juices here in just a second. Okay, over here in the microwave, I have these really large burrito size tortillas. She said to use the fajita size, and I would have, but we already had these on hand and I didn't want to waste them and we weren't going to use them otherwise. So I'm going to heat these up really quickly. Okay, so we shredded it and cut it. Some of it was able to really easily shred and then other pieces was, I don't want to say tough, but it wasn't as easily shreddable. But we got it all chopped up. Now we're going to put it back over into this yummy sauce. <laughs> All right, here we go. So it's very large burrito tortilla there, but I've already tasted it. Just a heads up, y'all. It's good. That's mind blowing. Wow. Oh yes, spicy. Yes. Bold. Yes. Rich. Um. But there is just so much going on here. I mean, obviously the flavor of the meat is overwhelming. Like it's just. It's just bold. It's really bold. It's yes. in your face. It's yes. Hot. And then with the spicy or the spicy mayo Asian slaw. Slaw that just. I mean, like there's just so many different little flavors going on there. You got the the difference in texture because of the slaw, the crunch, and then the, the spicy mayo. and um, But that beef is just incredible. Very reminiscent of the Korean barbecue 
bulgogi, I guess you could yeah. say is what they call it. Yeah. It's really good. So this is something that you want me to make again? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Tia, for sending this. Mm. Um, I know I said I already tasted it. I did. I tasted it when I was plating it up. I haven't had mine yet, so I'm excited to have it with the Asian slaw with it. So let me give that a shot and then I'll come back. Don't be surprised if you see this in a favorites video for next quarter. Oh my goodness. This is phenomenal. Steven said if you don't like or if you like bland food, you would definitely not like this. This has so much flavor. It's ridiculous. So, so good. Give it a try. So if you have not tried the Korean barbecue tacos, you really need to. And I'm pretty sure even if you don't have an Instant Pot, you can make those. You'll just have to do it a little bit differently. Check the description box. I'll have the link to the original recipe. They may even have notes in there on how to do it outside of the Instant Pot if you don't have one. But now, it's time for number one. And now, introducing the number one undisputed, undefeated champion of what's for dinner, the mini barbecue bacon cheddar meatloaves. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, I'm just gonna let these cool and then I will crumble these and I'll put them in a little container and put them in the fridge until I'm ready to cook tonight. So the recipe calls for just regular cheddar cheese. We still have this half a block of Colby Jack cheese, so I'm just gonna use this. of ground beef. This is 85% lean. I'm going to add in our two eggs. Six ounces of chili sauce, so half of this bottle. Our bacon that I've cooked and crumbled up. One and a half cups of cheese. It calls for sharp cheddar. This is Colby Jack. A half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. One teaspoon of onion powder. Two tablespoons of the dub sauce, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. When I overthink it, I can't say it. One teaspoon of yellow mustard. A teaspoon of minced garlic. And one teaspoon of seasoned salt. small loaves. Let's see how this goes. I gotta portion these out right. about a half a cup of barbecue sauce. I'm just gonna use what I have on hand. I'm gonna pour a little bit on each one and then I'm gonna brush it out. I've got my oven preheated to 425. We're gonna put these in at 25 minutes and then the last, after the timer goes off, I'm gonna turn it over to broil for like two to three minutes. Okay, so the timer just went off. We're gonna switch it over to broil. And I'm gonna set the timer again for about three minutes.
So I'm, I'm excited because this is the second time that we're having a meatloaf light dish within about a week. And I love meatloaf. So. Try it. Yeah. Eat it. I got it. All right, first of all, you gotta, you gotta, if it's good meatloaf, it's gotta cut a certain way, right? Look at that. Oh man, it's like butter. This, this. Oh boy. It's so soft. Cole is so excited he can't contain himself. Oh my. Man, that's good. There's just so much here. I mean, mm -hmm. the barbecue sauce, the bacon. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely get the barbecue sauce. You most certainly get the smokiness of the bacon. And then the Worcestershire sauce is definitely coming through as well. I mean, it is like, these are some really bold flavors in this meatloaf. Yeah, that sauce will be there and you'll be eating and then you'll get some of that sauce and it just Yeah, goes. yeah, it's yeah. really bold. Exactly. I love you. <laughs> I love the texture of it. The texture is very reminiscent of what we had the other day. The other day. You know, I think it's that cheese because cheese. both of these had cheese in them. I think you're right. It's the it's the cheese, the egg. Yeah. Um, and then you you breadcrumbs bread yeah. to pulled together. Um, it's tremendous. Well, I'm so excited. I need to. Mm. I need to eat. I'll be back. So, we've had two phenomenal meatloafs in the course of a week. The guys cannot get over this one. Like, look at their plates. Yeah. Y'all, this is so good. That smoky flavor comes out in it. Mm. And I love that this is faster than cooking a traditional meatloaf because traditional meatloaf takes around an hour, maybe a little bit more, just depending on how large it is. But since these are so small, it only took 30 minutes. It was great. Man, that's good. You gotta try this. <laughs> I'm serious. This is really good. If you don't want to make all five of these recipes, let us suggest that you make that number one. Those mini meatloaves out of this world. And I love that, you know, when normally you cook meatloaf, it takes forever because yep. it's so, so large. These little, little mini meatloaves is so quick, so easy, and so tasty. They were our favorites, all of us. Yep. Um, Cole isn't here right now, but I'm sure he would vote the same way. Yeah, that one checked all of the boxes. All of the boxes. So thank you so much for going back in time and looking at these recipes with us. I hope it kind of reignited your excitement to try something new. If you haven't tried any of those recipes, this is your time. We're telling you these are the best of the best. You should do that. And if you like this video, please be sure to leave us a comment. And a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. That's right. Thanks for watching. Bye, y'all. It crops in. Oh, it does. Go. Crops in. Go fix it. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the making. Stop. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. I just barely see your head moving. Right. Stop. I hear you. Okay. <clears throat> Do I need to kick you out for this? Because <laughs> I'm about to. I hear you. Ready? Yeah. No! I'm, I'm being normal. What is that? Is not normal. You do not stand around going. I was being normal. I need to fix my posture anyway. Come on. You acting normal? <laughs> do you want to get out of the shot and let me do the intro? Kindly. Okay, bye. Get okay. out. Coming in at number four is Marvette's French onion and chicken and green beans. <laughs> okay, so we highly said. Number three. What is it? <laughs> Number three. <laughs> what is it again? Creamy pesto chicken. Creamy pesto chicken. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> we go have more blippers than we are video. Right. <laughs> now that I've sufficiently made a fool of myself. Yes. Yeah. Okay.